Hello everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Dental Mnemonics, the channel where learning is smart and fun. We are again back with our Cracking Neville's Oral Pathology series. Today we will be discussing another fascinating syndrome, tuberous sclerosis, which is similar to Cowden syndrome as it is also a multiple hamartoma. Just like in our previous videos where we explained sarcoidosis with the help of a sarc and Cowden syndrome with the help of a moving cow, today we will relate tuberous sclerosis to a potato tuber because potato is type of a tuber which is a swollen underground stem that stores nutrients for the plant. So let's start with the name first. Tuberous sclerosis is commonly abbreviated as TSC. Now breaking down the TSC, let's imagine there were two strong commanders guarding a place called Bourneville which is present in Birmingham, England. Since everything in this video is about potatoes, they were eating potato flavored Pringles as you can see in this figure. So let's break it down. The T for 2 here stands for like tuberous sclerosis mutations involve either of the two suppressor genes that is TSC1 and TSC2. The strong here stands for they produce two strong proteins, hamartin which encodes for TSC1 and tuberin which encodes for TSC2. So they were very strong commanders or controller. So the controller here means that they control the cell growth through the mTOR pathway which stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. So even if you can't remember the name Bonville, I believe that everyone will definitely remember Pringles now relating it to potatoes. And by the way, potato flavored Pringles are crispier, at least they are my favorite. So now let's break down the mutation of tuberous sclerosis. And just to begin, I would like to say that this part is optional but for residents or oral pathologists wanting a quick memory trick for the chromosome number, here it is. First we count the letters in tuberous. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now continuing, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now what we do is we add 1 to the upper part and we subtract 1 to the lower part. So 8 plus 1 and 17 minus 1. So we will get the final result 9 and 16. So just to repeat what we did, we first counted the numbers of letters in the word tuberous. It turned out to be 8. Then we continued counting. We ended at 17. Then we added 1 to 8 and we subtracted 1 to 17 and we got the number 9 and 16. So this means that TSC1 is mapped on chromosome number 9 and TSC2 is mapped to chromosome number 16. Now coming to clinical features, again we, we will use our trusty potato analogy. So here is our potato. So we can see the potato has leaves in it. So this leaf, it signifies as leaf spots. And these leaves are green in color. The green here means saw green patches. Also the potato has small pits, these pits here shows enamel pitting and they have big spots which means confetti spots. Also we can see the potato growing like they have various fibers so we denote these fibers as fibromas and these fibers we, we are seeing it at the soil bed of the potato. So the bed of the potato it means nail bed. So let's decode all of this one by one. So saw green patches, they resemble the shark skin fabrics affecting the skin on the trunk as we can see on this figure. And s lip spots as you can see in this figure, like they are the ovoid hypopigmented areas which are best visualized under a UV light. So these two are hallmark skin lesions in tuberous sclerosis connective tissue hamartomas, the saw green patch and the s lip spots. Now coming to the pits, like enamel pitting, it is appeared in about 50 to 100 percent of patient on the facial aspect of anterior permanent teeth with patient having tuberous sclerosis. And the large spots, which was called the confetti spots, they are 1 to 3 mm pale macules on trunks and extremities, and they resemble scattered confetti like they are thrown on the skin. Now fibers, fibers, it was for facial angiofibromas. 
So they appear as a smooth papule and they are mainly centered around the nasolabial folds as we can see in this figure. And finally the soil bed of the potato which denoted nail bed. So we see the ongual or periongual fibromas which occurs at the margins of the nail bed. Now let's get creative with potato shapes. You might say, well, I've seen like a fat potato in the market, but I've never seen a heart shaped or a star shaped potatoes. Well, I have made this up to make this mnemonic even easier and also did this to add another explanation which I will discuss later. So here we can see three, three shapes of potatoes, fat shaped, heart shaped and star shaped. So let's break this down. So we know the other term for fat is lipoma. So one type of hamartomatous growth linked to tuberous sclerosis is angiomyolipoma, which we often see in the kidney. The heart shaped potato, the medical term for heart is cardiac. And we know that in the market, we rarely see a heart shaped potato, right? So there's a rare benign tumor of the heart muscle typically seen in tuberous sclerosis called cardiac rhabdomyoma. And finally, the star shaped potato, the words star, we relate it with the word astro or astrocytes and just to inform the name tuberous sclerosis it comes from cns hamartomas resembling potato like tubers and around 10 percent of the patient they develop sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma in the brain or we can say this as seza sega so remember when i told you that i created these crazy potato shapes i also did this to say that like usually in the market nowadays they add chemicals to change the shape of the potato for market appeal. So this brings us to the important oral feature of tuberous sclerosis. Many tuberous sclerosis patients they take phenytoin or other drugs for seizure control which can cause diffuse gingival enlargement. So we already discussed one dental manifestation of tuberous sclerosis where they had enamel pitting, the other dental manifestation is they can have diffuse fibrous gingival enlargement. Also we know that potato is kind of brown shaped and it is pigmented, right? So whenever we see brown and pigmented, the most obvious thing that comes to our mind is melanotic macule. So we also see hypomelanotic macules in patients suffering tuberous sclerosis. So coming to the diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis, like these are all our major criteria, like the fibers in potatoes, it resembles facial angiofibromas, also the soil bed of potatoes, ongual or periongual fibromas, and just in our previous slide, we discussed the melanotic macules. So there's the hypomelanotic macules, which are three or more in number, the leaf in potato, which was green in color, the saw green paths, and patient in tuberous sclerosis, they have different seizures so related with CNS hamartomas and multiple re retinal nodular hamartomas, the SEGA or the astrocytoma or subependymal giant cell astrocytoma also subependymal nodules and the different shapes of potato like it was heart shaped so cardiac rhabdomyoma, fat shaped angiomyolipoma which we usually see in kidney so renal angiomyolipoma and the star shaped which was SEGA SEGA and also lymphangial lymphomatosis of the lung. So in order to denote the major criteria we need to have two of the following features. Now this slide is not too much important but I will still cover it for the minor features like we can relate it with the word cyst, pits, fibs and polyps. So they have the bone cyst, they have multiple renal cyst, they have the randomly distributed enamel pits, fibroma in short can be said as FIPS, so they have gingival fibromas and they can have non-renal hamartomas or polyps. So for minor features just remember cyst, pits, FIPS and polyps. So likewise for our previous videos, I am also make, made a table to sum up all the features of tuberous sclerosis. So we break down the word TSC as two strong controllers or commanders. The two here denotes that it encodes the two genes TSC1 and TSC2. Strong is that it encodes two strong protein, hamartin for TSC1 and tuberin for TSC2. And controller was that it regulated the mTOR pathway. And the other name for tuberous sclerosis is Bonville Pringle syndrome because they were guarding the place called Bonville and they were eating potato flavored Pringle. And I did a trick to 
remember the chromosome mapped on tuberous sclerosis it turned out to be 9 and 16 so TSC is mapped on chromosome 9 and TSC2 is mapped on chromosome number 16 now coming to the features like the lips and they are green in color so as lip spots and saw green patches they had small pits and big spots the pits for enamel pitting the big spots for confetti spots and the fibers on potato it relates to facial angiofibromas and the soil bed where the fibers grew it relates to nail bed or ongol or periongol fibroma then we came to different shapes of potato seen in market they were fat shaped so fat as in lipoma so angiomyolipoma in kidney star shaped or sega called subependymal giant cell astrocytoma or heart shaped called cardiac rhabdomyoma which is a very rare benign neoplasm and i said that they changed the shape of the potato by adding chemicals so we relate chemical with medication so patient they can also have diffuse gingival enlargement as seen in phenytoin induced gingival enlargement so that's all for today i hope now you have a fun clear understanding of tuberous sclerosis thanks to our potato powered mnemonics if you want mnemonics on any of the dental topics just let us know in the comment section the links are given in the description box so if you like this video smash that like comment and subscribe button for more exciting dental learning content stay curious keep smiling and remember even the toughest tubers can teach us the softest lesson see you in the next video goodbye